You're listening to the Incomparables Total Party Kill podcast, in which a group of friends play Dungeons and Dragons on the internet for your amusement. This is episode number 470, recorded September 2024, posted October 2024. Vecna, Vecna, and Lich, LLC. <laughs> Welcome back to Total Party Kill. It's me, Tony Sindelar, a dungeon master. I use he and pronouns. And today, we're continuing our adventure for the month of Shocktober. <laughs> really, it's Shockvember, please. Some of you do better <laughs> than others. Oh. But I'm not, uh, we're I'm not naming names. We're continuing our adventure, uh, the nest of the Eldritch Eye. Our adventurers have descended down into the sewer, attempting to solve a murder, right or wrong, and ferret out a, uh, a cult that has taken up root uh, in the sewers beneath uh, the the, uh, the city of, of which they patrol. Allow me to introduce our players. They will introduce their characters, and then we will dive into things. First up, it's Brian Hambone Hamilton. Hello, I'm Brian Hambone Hamilton. I knew that going in advance. They them, please. Uh, my character is Zonoth. He's a uh, half-orc wizard, most known for taking the eye out of the... No, most known for putting the eye into the socket from episode two of Shocktober 2024. I'd like to thank you all for the fan art I've been seeing. It looks amazing. Y'all are the best, and I love you very much. I love Thank whenever you, we have like fantasy campaigns inside fantasy campaigns. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. In my fantasy, Twitter is still good. Mm. Next up, it's Lincoln Graves or Hayes. That's me, Lincoln Hayes. He, him. I am here playing Scuzz, the urban sewer druid. He is a Yonti snaky guy. And so far, I'm doing great at getting Monty's character beat up. Yep. Hey. Also joining us, it's Monster Ashley. I mean, Monty. Hi, it's me, Monster Ashley. Uh, I am a he, him, and I am playing Arch, a paladin Oath of the Crown guy who is very unpleased to be covered in guck, but I think it's good for him. Mm. Builds character. Builds character. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I are running into the same code base. Uh, <laughs> next up, it's Alien Sins. I mean, Aline Sims. Wow. Um, hello, I play <laughs> Gwinnell Boulderbelch. Uh, we both use she, her pronouns. Oh, Gwinnell, dwarf bard, collar Gwen. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, it's Tiff, Arment of Darkness. Welcome, Tiff. <laughs> hey, playing Shoemate Gurley, a tiefling rogue who is carved with reverence. Yeah. Remember, like, back around, like, I don't know, like, 2015 when people had fun Twitter uh, Halloween names? I just thought that was a simpler time we should revisit for that intro segment. Uh, and, you know, I could go alone, but that would be really scary. So joining me is my co-dungeon master, uh, the Beluga Whale, to my mariachi band. It's Dan Morin. Baby Beluga in a deep blue... Oh, my God, that's... <laughs> It's probably the least Shocktober song I could think of. No, oh, no, it's the most. Deadly beluga in the deep blood sea. There you go. Blood sea? Ugh. Yeah, that's scary. That's not Sweet. good. You don't want to know how much blood is in the sea, Tony. I mean, probably a just a lot. A lot. Um, I mean, it's watered down by definition, but there's still, I mean, all those fish full of blood. You ever wonder why right. the sea is mm -hmm. so salty? Is it what, the blood? No, it's high, I thought it was high the salt. salt content. Jeez. Okay, good. I thought it was just the salt. Chain rattle, chain rattle. Our oceans are chain terribly rattle, polluted. Chain rattle. All right. Uh, so, thank you. We'll just invoke <laughs> that whenever we go too far off tangent. So, our adventurers, you are deep in the sewers beneath Neverwinter, uh, attempting to solve the murder of an important NPC. I definitely don't have to scroll up in my document to find. Delvin Fahrenheit. That's why you bring a co-dungeon master. Um, you have traveled through some of the sewers. You have found your way into uh, some kind of strange temple. A door uh, with a sculpture of a skull next to it has had a desiccated eyeball fitted into it. The doors have slammed shut, which is actually not that bad since you were running away from a bunch of zombies. Uh, and so you now find yourself here in what we call in the uh, dungeon master map business, the hall 
of the Whispered One. The bottom of the stairway opens into a wide sanctuary with a vaulted ceiling. Stone pews are arranged in orderly rows. Black candles burning green flames occupy niches along the wall. Atop a pulpit at the far end of the hall stands a jagged sculpture of a hand with one eyeball in its palm. Dan, I believe we have visuals of some of those things. I do have this, which is a, there you okay. go. How yeah. about enjoy your Ooh. creepy mm. eye in your creepy hand. So the, the eye is physically in the hand. It's not holding the To be clear, it's like a sculpture. It's not, yeah. this is, mm-hmm. it's much bigger than, you know, a standard Tony, size I, hand. Tony, I want to add that you ran once ran an adventure in which the question was, why does the hand have six fingers? Uh, I was just going to bring it up. And we yep. now know. <laughs> It's because it was generated with AI. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you generation. how many of the options I had to go through on this hand. A lot. I'm one that oh had five. Oh, AI fingers. does not understand hands like no. or eating. Don't so ask long. it to eat stuff. It's it so gets weird. real weird. It also kind of looks like his pinky might also be a thumb. There are some questions. Uh, yeah. I want to be clear. I selected the least upsetting visuals and gave them to Dan for review. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. This was a spooky planning <laughs> session. <laughs> Hands are hard. So, uh, yes, yeah, so you have found yourself in some kind of cult place of worship. Um, and there are also hallways leading off of this uh, this this place of worship uh, to the east and to the west. That's how you describe things in Dungeons & Dragons. I'd like to just kind of look around the room and specifically paying attention to like the niches mm-hmm. in People the walls. People love niches. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're excellent. Um, and I just... Um, does anything stand stand out to me as something that I should like go investigate further? Uh, were you gonna roll something? Yeah. Rolled oh. a twenty on a perception check. Wow, oh. twenty two. So know, I'm getting is... them out of the way now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, you know, this is clearly a space that has been repurposed uh, for uh, use by this cult. And, you know, I I mean, I feel like it's your kind of standard uh, black candles, green flames, uh, stone slabs that you would sit on that, you know, they dragged in here from Ikea. Uh, But it seems like the the, the spirit Halloween, Tony, please. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. It's possible that this area was left abandoned and a spirit Halloween just (laughs) installed itself here. And then the cult rolled in later. Um, There are so many cults in this town. I just assume there's constantly being routed out and yeah. then another cult Man. comes in um, immediately like a hermit crab. I wanna yes. I wanna run an adventure now where you guys run a cult supply store. <laughs> <gasps> you gotta oh, watch yeah. it. Oh, that'd be so guys, much fun. It is th- okay. Yeah, it sounds fun, <laughs> but it is a rough business. Uh, first of all, unreliable customers. It's very seasonal. Low margin. Uh, it, Low margins. Robe suppliers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of you know, inspectors. So many robes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, plus it's like, you know. Too many. You got to get a skull guy. I mean, who, who's where are you going to source those skulls? The shot oh, I skull I'll pain. tell you where you're sourcing Talk the skulls. <laughs> But and people that's the want adventure hall. It's right there, dude. People want local skulls. <laughs> that's mm. the problem. Artisanal, <laughs> handmade, skulls. fresh skulls, seasonal. Uh, yeah, um, and you're competing with all those other fad businesses, right? Decorative where it's like, skull oh, season. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a the Froyo place, and then that's oh nope, now it's muffins, and now it's a dispensary, and now it's Froyo again. It's it's hard, you know. Anyway, uh, I don't remember I what question Alik. <laughs> She's investigating uh, the nooks. Over. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 chain, chain rattle, chain rattle. Thank you. Oh. Per- perception check of twenty-two to see if any of the niches stand out as something that one or more of us should investigate further. No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I will say. I mean, I, I will add that that spooky uh, statue that we showed you the image yeah. of is probably. It certainly is the the conversation piece of the room. Yeah. Seems like somebody might want to roll religion on that one. I don't yeah, know. I would like to roll uh, I'm bad like at to roll that. religion if uh, seems if like someone worth. would like to roll bad religion on that. <laughs> wow. Ooh, uh, I'll oh. roll bad religion. That is a That's uh, a one a seven. minus one. A seven? You suspect that the hand is religious in uh <laughs> All right, I'm also going to roll religion. I'll just point out anyone could just roll well. Like, if you get above a 15 on a D20, that's pretty good. You don't actually have to be trained in something to do well. Everyone's always like, I only like to roll something if I'm already really good at it and know I'm going to do well. And it's like, you know, it's just, you're just slightly better. You could still just know stuff. 
Fire. Well, I rolled a nine, and my minus one means I got an eight. Uh, Are you okay. Happy? You think that <laughs> I the I a one is also minus one. Symbol is zero. <laughs> Give me that okay. roll time religion. I got a 13. Still not great. That's uh, enough. Of, yeah, that's enough. Uh, with a oh. 13, uh, uh, Shumate, you know, uh, you recognize the I- image of the hand holding the eye as the symbol of Vecna, a powerful lich uh, known to kind of the worshippers of Vecna consider Vecna to be a god of secrets. Uh, Vecna, you know, look, it's it can be reductive to say that there are good gods and evil gods, but like... A lot of people consider Vecta bad news. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the the whole thing with a lich is that it's like it's somebody who has extended their life uh, far beyond the, uh, you know, the, the natural warranties thereof uh, and embraced on death. And, you know, I think just most of us are aligned with the natural order of life and death. And these just things. to be and clear. Also, on death in- is I'm trying not to make value statements about. An evil undead god. <laughs> Here in the uh, local uh, Boston area, the name of not one, but two yes. separate firms that are you know, <laughs> local employers, which are fine, not evil gods, presumably. We don't know for sure. Vecta, Vecta, and Lich. <laughs> well, Vecta and one law firm that's definitely evil. <laughs> Why is there always smoke coming out of that building? Mm. Picking a new pope. It's maritime law. <laughs> that's the most evil of all laws. <laughs> Yar, yar. All that blood in the sea, you know? <laughs> yeah, he'll do it. That'll turn any salty to a lich. It's October. Jane <laughs> right. Ooh. So it seems likely that the cult that you are on the, tracking, uh, you know, is, is specifically a cult of Vecna. That's not good. We got a cult of Vecna on our hands. That was one of our primary mission objectives is to identify the cult. Check. We still need to Cult avenge uh, Delvin's death and capture some cultists. Does, mm. does Arch, just to be clear, does Arch have like a like a written out to do list? I think Arch has a HUD that comes up with like no, he's, got little, <laughs> he's got one of those little uh, flip up yeah. notebooks. notebooks that you yeah. write in if yeah. you're a cop. Have yeah. you crossed off identify cult? Well, he puts well, a no, little I wrote check down next to it. identify cult dash it's Vecna, oh, so yeah. that I can give a report to somebody later on. Mm. Yeah. Giving a report is an important part of the police work. I yeah, Arch has a really awesome steampunk typewriter uh, that makes just like a loud noise whenever you finish. Uh, woo-ga, woo-ga, woo-ga. Yeah. <laughs> That's not great. All right, Dan is fired for my <laughs> fully work. Um, you know, it's good to understand the boundaries of where a co DM can be. Uh, okay, well, really helpful, and where you need a third DM providing soundscapes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So Thank pretty you soon the whole thing's just DMs competing with each other to DM. <laughs> if I could DMs just, yeah, all the if way I down. could just if I That's could really improv. delegate more of this, <laughs> that would be great. Um, well, I, we were gonna hire a producer, but that was truly the, the scariest yeah. option for Shocktober. What if we just had one person that provided five different players? Anyway, Shocktober. Chain rattle. Uh, <laughs> chain rattle. Blah, um, blah. Blah. Okay. Blah. Oh, yeah, blah. Blah. <laughs> Should we have people investigate the two hallways or do people want to check out things here more? I'll go look. I feel like we're on, we're in hot pursuit. Yes, people were so we pursuing want to pursue? you. That yes, is are they no, they're behind the door. Yeah. It's kind of tepid Let's pursuit. pursue and get away from the zombies. Okay. Mm. It looks like Scuzz and Zonoth are headed to the east. Are you going to scout and come back or are we just parading Let's off in a line? Party. I'll sneak a bit. All right. I'm pretty sneaky. The I'm two with the stealth. exact same voice should go down the same hallway. <laughs> I'm more nasal than you. <laughs> you're, you are. Your chest voice. I mean, I'm, up, chest I'm up here. You're down here. <laughs> That's right. I'm 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 a a all chesty. <laughs> yeah, you guys, look, we got, you guys are all a nice range of dirty Batman. I get it. Oh. <laughs> dirty, dirty, dirty Keanu Reeves. Um, <laughs> Rachel! L- Link, Lincoln, <laughs> Scuzz, have you rolled stealth? I did. I rolled a 14. Ooh. All right. Scuzz. We're going to say Scuzz sneaks oh. down the hallway. You can see it goes for about 20 feet before it opens into a larger chamber. This is, uh, it's it's important to understand down here, everything is dark and spooky. And I, I, I just imagine kind of wet, like everything's just soggy. Like you, because you were in a sewer and now you've gone further down so there's just there's a lot of moisture is what is what we're saying here uh yeah so this is like basically 
a library where things are in just really not good mint condition. There are crooked shelves uh, with some books and scrolls that stand against the wall. Uh, in the center, there's a, a square table, and it looks like it's it's just like an improvised uh, desk that was set up there. Uh, there's the notes and ink stained parchment, uh, and you can see uh, there is a kind of a twisty tunnel headed to the south. Dan has provided a visual of a filthy underground library for your mm. looking enjoyment, but not a filthy library. Just to be clear. Oh, no. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there's no beaded curtain. Yes, there's just a, um, yeah. <laughs> We're just, just uh, I will <laughs> cast produce flame and hold it in my hand as I peek into this room. And All right. I'd like to look around for anybody who wants to kill uh, Arch. The room seems unoccupied. Um, unless you consider well, you're coming with me. secrets and books and scrolls. Unoccupied. I'll call back down the hallway. This looks like a library. There's another room that goes south. Zonoth would like to go up to the table with the books and push the A button to interact with object. How, how much time would you say spend you spend studying these books? I mean, there's a lot of stuff scattered across this table. There's notes. Uh, there's some manuscripts. There's some scrolls and parchments. It's kind of a mess. Um, you probably would have to take some time just to make sense of it because mm-hmm. it's not like you can just glance at it. Like, and some of it's like really arcane and mm. uh, very detailed and has a lot of specific jargon and language that makes it seem very uh, academic almost. But yeah, there's a lot There's a lot going on there. I think if, if you... I were to roll a check, yeah. would that be religion, does it seem like? Um, I would say you don't even need to roll a check so you much as you probably, time. yeah, spend maybe 10 minutes or so. Just apply okay. yourself. Oh, but I don't like applying myself. Oh, okay, I'll find. I'll apply myself. All right, remember it's D and D. You don't actually have to apply yourself. You just say oh, that you're God. applying yourself. <laughs> God, I wish real life were that way. It's escapism. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you are reading through uh, through documents, uh, uh, Zonoth, and you are learning a lot about the inner workings of this cult. Or at least as far they're they're very good at documentation. Mm-hmm. Um, the leader of the cult is a a person Great. named Zeli. Z- Why would you put all Zalrir. these together? Come on, Zalrir. It's, it's a common name, Tony. Okay, Zalrir. Z a l r y. Second. There's like R. three Zalrirs in my kids' daycare alone. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not up on what people are naming their children these days. Uh, and Zonoth, uh, Zalrir seems to be very fixated on doing experiments, as many cult leaders uh, are interested in doing, and uh, specifically is seeking to siphon secrets away from an individual soul. Mm. Early experiments uh, resulted in sludge monsters, <laughs> which <laughs> explains the sludge monsters that you fought one level up. Uh, those were people who, you know, had their souls siphoned away incorrectly. Maybe too much um, soul siphoned. Yeah. Just a little smidge, yeah. smidge too much. Yeah. Uh, as you're exploring, you also find, in addition to all these kind of piles of uh, uh, greasy notes, uh, you find a nice little like ebony box. Uh, I imagine it's like it's like shoebox sized. Oh, it's locked. It's locked. Okay. Yeah. Well, you I can tell all that. that to the rest That's of the, the team. Thing. In Dungeons and Dragons, you can just tell if something's locked or not. That's the thing <laughs> I've decided in my adventures. From here on. You look <laughs> at you, it, Cody you know Dion. it's locked. Uh, uh, I can convey that to the rest of the team. Houses, Tony. Because I look yeah. at the doors, I'm like, Dan, you shouldn't rob houses because it's the wrong thing to do. It's not locked. It'd be hard. Okay. You rob banks. Houses are boring. There's no money in them. <laughs> yeah. I convey that to the rest of the team with a special interest to, uh, hey, Arch, I saw that the paper they used in one of these notebooks is uh, like really nicely ruled. I think it is from this other region across the thing. It's really nice paper. I think you'd like it. You should steal let's, it. Let's check on. Oh, back, is this, back so is in this the... paper created in one specific part of the town and nowhere else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's from the paper district. They pronounce it Papier. Papier. <laughs> Uh, what, so well, you know, it took zone off like 10 minutes of reading through notes to do this. I feel like things might've happened while that was happening. Uh, shoemate, what have you been up to? I see your token still just in the, uh, kind of in the, uh, hall of whispers. Looks I'm like going to go down the other hallway and I rolled okay. a 22 stealth to do that. All right. Wow. You stealthily stealth, like a stealthy stealth, stealth down the hallway. 
Uh, I did not notice that happened. Yeah, you Nobody don't notice that happened. Nobody noticed it was so Arches stupid. is like talking to you and has not noticed that you've left. You've totally Batmaned him. Um, <laughs> and uh, the uh, the hallway he- heads that way and it, it, it opens up into a, uh, it looks kind of like a like a cave that maybe has been expanded a little bit and someone has installed uh some uh like bunk beds in this cave uh and looking in there you see that there are uh cultists uh well i mean look is that is it offensive to assume they're cultists they're wearing cu- hooded masks uh, hooded robes they have masks that do they have ready. hats to just say cultist they have hats that say cultists. They make they cults great again. Live, yeah. <laughs> they're they're sleeping immediately adjacent to like a room with a statue of a hand holding an eye. Um, it sure seems like this might be the sleeping quarters of some cultists. Yeah, the, the key fact: they are asleep. <laughs> yes, they're asleep. They're snoozing, uh, so and you can stealthy. see that the passageway, uh, the ha- hallways continue to the south, um, but the cultists are sleeping there uh, peacefully on some. Uh, cots and bunk beds and whatnot can you like splinter cell stealth kill people in this game <laughs> i love that you asked that <laughs> gonna be honest uh yeah uh you is that a try. big i've, ne- I've never I, seen that happen uh which yeah you guys aren't usually good at sneaking up on anyone you yeah, guys are you usually could, the people who get sneaked up on you um, could i mean when a character when a when a creature is incapacitated which these mm-hmm. people are. Every time you go to sleep, people, you're incapacitated. Think about it. Uh, I feel like they. You can do a coup de gras, right? Yep. Oh, I'm just. I'm so. I'm so tempted to just sneak up and just a little, like just a little, just a little, just a little coup de gras. Just yeah, a small. Just, just a little bit. Just, just a little. Like, as a treat. Just, as a treat. Just, as a treat. Just, Go sleep. Go very, very sleepy. They're already asleep. <laughs> I want them sleeping more. I'm picturing. Okay. I'm picturing big sleep. Shoemate crouching down, just whispering. Shh. 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 So creepy. Shh. Shh. Uh, Shh. Dan, I think we should look up the rules for coup de gras and see how this plays out. I mean, I already rolled a twenty-two for. Yeah, you're stealth, stealthy. So yeah. I'm gonna you're... creep up to the yeah. first one right here. All door. right, he's sleeping on the top bunk, and you just like, I like just, we, we see a view of him sleeping peacefully. Sleeping and your peacefully. head slowly rises up next to his, and then your <laughs> hand, and in your hand, you and are. And I'm holding, staring at him like, like, mm, like eyes yeah. wide. I'm not sure this is how police work is supposed to be conducted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a police officer. Um, it says arches to nobody in the other room. <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> I'm in here. Okay, so <laughs> attack rolls against uh, an unconscious creature. Okay. Have advantage, and okay. it is a critical hit if you're within five feet of them. <laughs> Jack, oh, so, and I am Jack. so close. All right. Let's see. 13. Do I get my um, hit modifier or anything like that? If oh, yeah. I'm it's, using it's a normal roll. Oh, yeah. Normal it's attack a normal roll. attack. Oh, just a normal attack roll? With, okay. a, with advantage. Okay, with so advantage. that was a 13. And it's a crit, a... so if you yeah, hit, 13. double damage. 13. What? 13 will hit. Yes. 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 <laughs> right, Dan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All minute. right. All right. So then, uh, double your damage dice is, is what Dan is asking you to do. Well, like, okay. So what would my damage dice be if it's just like my hands? <laughs> oh, well, I, I thought you were using. Yeah, you're oh, like okay. A, no. Okay. Oh, so if I'm doing, oh, if I'm doing a dagger, then it was yeah. actually a 15. So what we hit anyway. So we're good. We're yeah. Good. Okay. Like, oh, we're going to dagger this. Okay. One. I would. Four. I'm just going to say, like, a weapon is better than your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Four. We're, we got. We got. You, uh, we got. What are you doing? <laughs> we got four damage. <laughs> so you're using what? A dagger? Mm hmm. So normally it'd be a D4. So you're going to roll 2D4. And then you're going to add whatever the bonus to your damages which is probably all right we got six okay so you got and then what's the what's the bonus that what that is with the oh, bonus. okay the i got six. two two and two yeah yeah okay and i don't think that's gonna kill him i i would be concerned oh, wait, about i that. have a sneak attack yeah ah, here, 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 here. There, uh, there you go uh, yeah all right because this is this is, that's a good this is critical this is critical <laughs> okay and then so that's 2d6 uh, so that's four, and then that's uh, that's another four. So that's eight, eight more. Don't you get to six. double your sneak attack dice too? You do. It's you irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> academic. Let's just go. Well, oh, two and uh, one. 
So yep. there we go. Your All right, dagger so, goes uh, through that cultist. Yeah, Arch, yeah. from where you're standing, you suddenly realize that uh, Shoemate is not standing in the <laughs> temple with you. And you go looking around. You look off to your left. And you see a, a hallway leading to, you know, a room where possibly some cultists. And you just see like a splash of must be red paint hit the wall <laughs> from there. But no, it's, uh, more, it's more gushy. It's like. <laughs> I will attempt to Sorry, stealth red down jam. There. Thank you. <laughs> what did Monty say? He's stealthing. Down. He's stealthing down. down there. Oh, you're you're coming too. Yeah. Now I've got disadvantage. Mm. And I rolled a two and a three. Mm. So my total number is Come five. Oh. And are you wearing that's armor of some kind? Yeah, that's why I have disadvantage. Yeah, what kind of armor? I just is said it? that. Uh, Chainmail, but it's kind of With made of bells and acided <laughs> out, mm, mm, so that, it's not even good chainmail. That mail makes at this it point. probably a little more jangly. Yeah, like oh, jangle no. mail. Yeah, you're doing a little chain rattle, chain rattle mail as you Ooh. come down the the corridor there. <laughs> He'll be there well, with bells. I on. I feel like I don't know about you, Tony, but I feel like though Shoemate was extremely stealthy and quiet in in the manner, the Sam Fisher esque manner that she dispatched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She dispatched what, this uh, uh, cultist. One of the cu- one of the cultists uh, groggily sits up in in, in his cot. And he kind of like he's rubbing at his eyes, and he because he hears the sound of you know, acided chain rattling against acid could, chain. Could, could you and sound like looks his over, park? yeah. Oh he looks God. over and sees Arch in the doorway, and Shoemate just covered in his friend's blood. Um, I hide I under the corpse, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he yells, "Intruders!" And there is the sound of uh, several creatures rising from their beds, both in this room and the adjoining room. I will uh, first look at the cultist that Shoemate killed and say, good work. One of our missions was definitely to avenge the death. So uh, yeah. that's the death avenged. Now we're going to capture the rest of the cultists unless they um, resist. Are you going to resist? Uh, they're you... grabbing their scimitars and advancing on you. I will say, right, are I you? Will sh- I, 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 will, I think he also, are you trying to intimidate them or is this a just a? Yeah. Of course I'm trying to intimidate them. roll intimidation? I do want to roll intimidation. Thank you for asking. I rolled an eight. They <laughs> seem unintimidated. I will shout see- to the east. Uh, we got cultists with scimitars. We got cultist sign. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you all roll initiative. I'm just, I'm just shaking my head and pinching my nose, like. Ugh. Oh, but you're getting blood everywhere because there's blood all over your hand, and now there's oh, yeah. blood all over your nose. Oh yeah, it looks real cute though, actually. Oh, okay. In like a Patrick Bateman kind of way. Yeah, well, like when someone's baking and they get a little, like, you know, flour or something, like, cute in yeah. their face. It's like that, Meanwhile, but blood I look, and a I huge look tiefling. terrible. I'm just covered in guck and gunk. Oh, yeah, degunk. Um, <laughs> oh, oh um, uh, degunk, yup, dot biz. <laughs> did you leave a business card on the corpse? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I did. It's your calling card. Ah, you guys must work for Slide it on top there. <laughs> Either Just... the local militia has been here or a serial murderer. We don't know which. <laughs> Fortunately, they left a card with their address. It's a business opportunity. <laughs> uh, Scuzz this guy's and Shumate, business gunked. please roll some initiatives. 14. So the good news is the uh, cultists uh, are surprised by the situation and are going to go last. Uh, they're not, I mean, they're not technically, it's not a surprise round, but they just, they rolled, I'm giving flavor to the low initiative roll. They've got, they've they're gotten, waking up. They're groggy. They're they up. Gotta, yeah. Yeah. Do you know how like hard me. it is to wipe the sleep out of your eyes when you've been sleeping in a cult mask? Gwenriel or Gwen, you're going to be first, then Scuzz, then Arch, then Zonoth, and Shumate last. Uh, so Gwenriel, I think you're kind of standing in the doorway of the library, which is kind of a ways away from the cultist quarters, uh, supervising the searching of the uh, uh, the literature. Uh, what would you like to do? Did I hear that shriek? Yeah, everybody okay. heard that shriek. These I'm caverns, they really, they really echo. Running, I'm just running, and that's. I can't that's... get very far. Well, I can get kind of far, but they're very far away, so. My turn is just running toward just, the shrieks. Your job is running. All right. Um, let's see. Scuzz, you are next. You are also in the library a ways away. Yes. Um, hearing commotion, I'm going to wild shape into a riding horse oh, no, did start and the use commotion. my newfound 60 feet of movement. So majestic. Yeah. To get back into the main chamber 
Mm-hmm. Wait, are there other non-riding horses? I yeah, draft clear. horses, ponies. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Are these answer. chambers horse <laughs> compliant? Wild horses horse that compliant? run free on the moors yeah. without being... Yeah. 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 Centaurian Checking horse privilege. Right? Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have... Yeah. Um, <laughs> iron horses. Now that I'm, I'm a horse, horse, I just, you know... <laughs> I'm I just, a large I transform beast. Into Am I going to be able horse. to fit down this hallway? They're probably fine. You might have to duck your head a bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm a horse, man. The horse has to crawl. Uh, it's really awkward, <laughs> but it's real fast. So I'm going to. Have you seen a horse army crawl? No, I've not. Uh, There's a I've, never, I've never, I've never served a horse. I think it happens in War Horse. <laughs> Into the room. Wow, that seems right. And then rear up on my hind legs and whinny and. You know what? This cultist who scary. was just waking up did not think he was about to be attacked by a horse. <laughs> he thinks he's dreaming. Yeah. Uh, no, this one again, the sewer horse. <laughs> Here I am. All right. So your turn is getting there. Uh, is Yeah. In a, in a horse uh, action. Arch, you just clanked into this room, setting this whole situation off. So you're next. I feel like Shoemate had something to do with this all <laughs> being kicked off. I don't remember I was that. doing fine. I will stride forward. What was this uh, guy doing? That I just walked in front of. Oh, he just yelled. He, he's, like, he's, he's the one who said, intruders! You might remember him from encounters such as, intruders! Yeah. He has a rich backstory. He's a guy who yells, intruders! I got names for all of them, Tony. Everyone needs a job. I got names That's for the thing. You, usually when someone says that, they don't have names for them. No, I do. I have names. Do you want All right. Should we, do you want to learn? Well, you'll have to ask them, I guess. All right. Uh, Dan, give me a name for this guy. Uh, which one? The one that are just white. Yeah. Uh, that is Wolfa. How do you w- spell that? W-U-L-F-A. I don't think I can smite this guy. Really? It's like emotionally or? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you can non-lethally smite him basically because you want to oh, arrest yeah. him. That's right. It's it's there is day. non-lethal, is it there? That's right. Yeah. Uh, I will hit him with my sword non-lethally. Well, you hit him with the flat of the sword. <laughs> right? You've got one of those Rurouni Kenshin swords with the blade on the other side. Sure uh, I do. That's right. 1990s anime. What that makes got, a lot of sense on a, on a broadsword. Yeah. It's... If I rolled an 11, what would you say? I would say that you should roll higher numbers and you'll do, be better at Dungeon Mastering. Or wait, or right, just Dungeons I, and Dragoning. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that was a little, my sword there was some Freudian the... in that one. Yeah. Uh, so with an 11, I, somehow the sleepy well. cultist like rolls to the side as your blade like stabs into his bed. Uh, I was going to say like feathers fly out, but I don't think these cultists have feather beds. I think just <laughs> rats fly out. Be- That's yeah, right. Bed your beds are just stuffed with, stuffed with rats. Uh, oh, we could talk to them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not They're not going to have a lot to say. They're in the cultist bed business. Wait, it's is 11. it Jimmy or Jerry? Is he, yeah. <laughs> there's one of them in here? <laughs> So I whacked my sword into the pillow next to him, and I say, this cult is Not acting up to code. out of its authority. You will all surrender and come with me right now. Uh, give me uh, an intimidation check there, Arch. Oh, okay. I will do that. I, think... I will do that do, right do we now. Have, do we have a disadvantage on this because the, you you just tried to kill yeah. them and they're acting in self, self-defense self maybe? Disadvantage? Okay. Well, that was a seven. Let's just uh, oh. yeah, let's see. do another let's roll go to see what lower. that does. Let's go Ooh, lower. Let's go lower. eight. Oh, so eight. All right. we're going to go with the seven on that intimidation. Yep. All right. They seem, yeah. uh, you know, uh, distressed about the current situation, but not intimidated into uh, surrendering. Uh, Mati, you all set? Yeah. All right. Zonoth, you are next. You are in the library, and everyone ran to the east, leaving you all alone in the library with dark, dark secrets. Scuzz, check this out. Uh, Zenrir first discovered Vecno at the age of 12, and he, oh my god, a horse! Um, and Zonoth scared of horses. Mm-hmm. takes off. I mean, you're, you don't expect a horse. Surprise it's a horse, horse in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. you don't expect it. Uh, surprise horse. Didn't even offer you a ride. And he's yeah. riding no. a horse. And he was a riding he's horse. A riding That's, horse. R- That's what he rude. does. If he were a pommel yeah. horse, I'd understand, but a riding horse, come on. Yeah, uh, a hobby horse, yeah. You know, so I'm going horse. to dash uh, for double my movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I think that's one. And then, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Another batch of movement. So I'm running after my horse friend. Uh, All right. I see Gwen a couple sewers. squares ahead of me. Yeah. And uh, that's my turn as I take in this scene. All right. 
Uh, Shoemate, you are there. You're coated in the blood of one cultist. You know there are two there, but also you, you know from the sounds of uh, cultists waking up that there are probably more cultists to the south looking to join the party. Okay, I'm going to take out my crossbow because really we only need like one of these people alive. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Right? All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I don't yeah, hit correct. at all. No, that was bad. Uh, that was bad. You fire a warning shot into the ceiling of the cave? <laughs> yes, that is what I do. With <laughs> you know a seven, people shoot I a, fire Shoot a gun into the air shot. and everyone calms down. Doesn't work as well with a crossbow. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> then they have to spend like like two minutes like cranking another bolt in. <laughs> you know? Um, uh, yeah. That went horribly. Um, all right. Yep. Yep. That's that's it. Let's see. Bonus actions. Um <laughs> <laughs> <You're gonna hide. laughs> I could do some sleight of hand tricks. Um, you pull a coin magic. out of that cultist <laughs> ear. <laughs> cultists, <laughs> cultists love close magic. Um, <laughs> um They're no. easily swayed. That's kind of their whole thing. I got uh, you're covered in blood, you can maybe intimidate like a Mandy situation where you're covered in blood, you got a crossbow. <laughs> oh, could mm. I intimidate as a bonus action? Uh, yeah, if that? you hadn't just fired a crossbow bolt into the ceiling, that'd be real effective. <laughs> I mean, but that's that could kind be of part like, of it. Yeah, it's like meant to do that. And I'm attention. covered in blood. Bang, bang, bang. I mean, come on. You can you can roll with disadvantage because you yeah. didn't mean to fire the bolt Fine. into the ceiling. That's a twenty and a thirteen. All right, it it does. You know, Spooky. they may be somewhat scared of you, but uh, they're not going to surrender right now. Um, so. Dan, uh, I think the cultists are next. You want to control some cultists? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let us start with Wolfa, who uh, is uh, just rolled out of the way of Arch, taking a swing at his pillow, and uh, growls at him. That was my favorite <gasps> pillow. It was the only one we've been allowed. There's only one pillow among all of us, and you ruined it. And he will swing There's at you. There's plenty of pillows in jail, pal. <laughs> Is that there? true? That may be inaccurate. Uh, and never eat. Hmm. Uh, he will, his hand sort of reaches out, grabs a scimitar that's been left standing, like leaning against the wall next to the bed, and he will uh, swing it at you for a rather paltry 10. We that don't know their armor not class. hit me. Okay. Uh, he menaces at you with it, even though he's not been particularly effective so far. We also have in front of Scuzz, though you didn't stop to ask his name. How he's got a name he, tag. His name hey, is, Jan, what's his name? Oh, thanks for asking. This is Egger, E-G-E-R, and he has seen uh, uh, there's a horse in front. <laughs> <laughs> there's not supposed to be a horse in here. This is yeah. not. Uh, yeah. He said he yells something about this area is not zoned for horses and attempts <laughs> to stab the horse with his scimitar. Oh yeah, this guy, oh, this guy is a real not wow. in my backyard cultist. He's like, you not know, my sewer. You're di- yeah, you're diminishing the quality of his sewer neighborhood by having a horse here. Uh, the that, cult owners association will object. The horse owners association will also object. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, lots of HOAs well, going around. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that is a dirty twenty on Scuzz. Rude. <laughs> yeah. I believe it. Uh, I assume that will hit a horse. Uh, four we'll hit most horses. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but not Even this. A horse. Not a riding horse. But not a uh, riding horse. <laughs> little red riding horse. Okay, uh, that is four slashing damage. What'd you call her? L- um, little red riding okay. horse. <laughs> okay. All right. So you did some damage to a horse. Yeah. Uh, Tony, do we have <laughs> do any other cultists yourself? at our disposal? Yeah. Uh, two cultists rush in from the back room, and I think they're just going to go for the nearest targets, which are Shoemate and Scuzz. Scuzz being a oh, horse. And clearly they yell at each other as they come. It's like, Munder, is that a horse in here? Yeah, Fred, I think it is. Uh, hold on. Was Munder that was and just Fred. Fred was the second Fred Freda. Freda. F-R-E-D-A. Oh, okay. Wait a D&D it up. Yeah, Fantasy Fred. Do they all Thanks have a last names, names you came in. We Vecna. appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Munder, M-U-M-U-N-D-E-R, Munder. I know how to spell Munder. <laughs> so far, you've only spelled Sunday, one of these. Monday, Monday, happy day. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> uh, other cultists, uh, you, you, there's definitely the sound of movement uh, coming from the south as other cultists are running uh, to converge on this situation, but they're not there yet. Uh, so do Freda and Munder get an attack? As yeah, they sure they do. Freda is going to also, he also seems to be a stickler for horses being mm-hmm. down here, uh, and he will slash at the horse that is Scuzz with a scimitar for a 10. Does 10 hit? 
Nay. Didn't hit the Ooh, You were oh. waiting for that one. Wow, you were wow. waiting for that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nay is for mm-hmm. horses. Uh, That's right. Oh. Munder. I call back something that happened before the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Munder is terrified to see Shoemate covered in his friend's blood, but seems to steal some resolve in himself and basically just gives a, a blood curdling scream and runs at Shoemate with a scimitar outstretched. That's the well, way now to do his it. friend's blood is all curdled. I mean, come on. Rude. <laughs> uh, Just run at him and scream. Works every time. Nine to hit. Uh, that misses. It goes wide as the scimitar like plinks into the wall next to you. Dan, I'm sorry. I forgot to pack the good cultists when I was preparing for this adventure. <laughs> they just got up, okay? Yeah. Look. <laughs> they worked it hasn't overnight. They not even had a cup of ambition yet. Yeah. <laughs> They still have on their feety pajamas. These yeah. are these Aww. are the sip, 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 sip. this is the second very shift quiet, cultists. Though. The first shift yeah. cultists are doing something important. All right, so that was team cultist. Uh, that brings us around to the top, and it is uh, we start with Gwenriel. Wow. The good news is you have a lot of options for target people to attack. Yeah, target rich environment options and one um, horse. I should have planned, but I was looking at all of the chaos of the you were cultists. just taking, <laughs> taking in the taking rich tapestry it all of cult, in. Cult, all their cult rich backstories hijinks. and well-developed characters Three, sure dan two, sure i think munder is really into ska i can tell just by that look in his eye okay play, so the first thing first thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to you don't have to play an instrument to be really into ska trust me <laughs> do, do. <laughs> you don't even have to play an instrument to be I'm in a ska band this really. is not happening i'm gonna <laughs> Yeah, you could be the guy who jumps around. Into yeah, the doorway. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah, and I'm going to <laughs> Scott look <Tober>. at <laughs> Arch, Scuzz, and Shoemate, and I don't know why I'm going to do this, but I'm going to grant you each five temporary HP. Oh, um, hey. So. How generous. How yeah. Do you, how does Gwen will accomplish that, Aline? Through what means? So. Dan, the player said they're doing something. We don't. It's not our job as question. It's not to question everything. <laughs> I just want uh, I our job little, to say. I was looking for flavor. Oh. oh, okay. I just seemed a little, you know, rude. No, I wanted to know. I wanted. I would paint, paint a picture. <laughs> In the fear name of the, the pow- mind. Name name the power that you're using. Ooh, no, okay. I just want to know what like what actions are they taking. Uh-huh. We have very different styles to this. Okay. No, I just want like. Are you sing? Do you, do you like recite a poem? Do you sing a song? Yeah, it's, she's a tortured poet. Oh, oh yes, horrible to- torture poet. Who is but, out there torturing all these poets? <laughs> <laughs> we should be in jail. Yeah. 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 yeah, they have it coming. Okay, they know what they did. Poetry. Mm. Yeah, and most of it's poetry. Um, but you can't hear her because <sighs> she's just saying things under her breath, and so. There's some hand flourishes and some mumbling, and then three people just feel a little bit yeah, better. Yeah, I've been to a poetry reading. I understand. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You're going to have to snap for her later, but okay. for now, you just have to accept that this has happened. And I think... Whoa, man. Whoa, man. <laughs> Whoa, man. She my... ran with my heart and my cat. <laughs> Most of my actions are melee, so I think that's all I'm going to do right this second. All right. Uh, horse goes, you're next. Oh, that's me. Um, in horse form, remind me, Wolfa has taken damage, correct? Uh, no. No one, uh, no, no one else Edgar, is taking. Basically, no one else has. No one's she made, they murdered of, one cultist yeah. right out of the gate, mm-hmm. and then so far, n- very few people have hit anybody else. Yeah, the status of cultists right now is either murdered or full health. No in between. <laughs> I was doing fine. I just want to say. Yeah, before I was. In you front. were. You actually were. Um, a rare. I'm gonna, gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna kick Wolfa in the face. All right, rude. That's only a nine. Uh, nine will not hit a cultist. I'm sorry. They still uh, are winning in dis- distress. They apparently are sleeping in leather armor. Art, you are are next, followed by Zonoff. I am going to attack Wolfa mm-hmm. lethally. <gasps> Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Gloves are off. 14 to hit? 14. You, Wolfa, you know, is holding the two halves of the pillow that you had you cut in half last time, and you stab Wolfa right through the pillow. Uh, and which, how does damage work for this? This seven damage because it's a one-handed 
longsword at the moment. One-handed longsword. Okay. Wolfa is alive, uh, but extremely badly hurt. Extremely badly hurt? Extremely badly hurt. Extremely. Like, if you do that again, they would be very dead. All right. Then I'm just going this to is, keep this to They are strictly a one-stab situation here for, you know. All right. Then I'll keep it to regular mundane sword play and not bring in any of the uh, paladin stuff that would okay. make it uh, messy. Zone off your neck, shoemate. You're getting ready. Oh, actually, I wanted to move. Oh, okay. Out here to try to. You're gonna maneuver, so you're still engaged with Wolfa, but also getting getting into the mix with Freda. Yeah, I'm hoping to absorb some of the uh, aggro that's coming into the the room. Oh, very nice. I'd like to use my reaction DMs for my Halo of Spores, <gasps> and I'm Halo. gonna try Halo. to take oh, out spores. Wolfa. I need a con save. Con save from Wolfa. All right. Uh, cultists are not particularly good or bad at anything. I rolled a 10. 10 does not save. You are going to take four necrotic damage. Okay. The cultist dies from necrotic damage. Whoa. Honestly, the Wolfa, murdered by necrotic energy, starts to kind of raise the question of who is the good guy and who is the bad guy in this situation as you continue your midnight raid on their home. We're the good guys. We have badges. That proves it. Next. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm a police horse. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Zonoth, that was our... Oh, sorry. That was on uh, Arch's turn. So, Zonoth, mm -hmm. it is now your turn. All right, Zonoth continues to run. If I am here, do I have line of sight on Freda? Oh, yeah, sure. All right, cool. So Zonoth say is standing hi. in the doorway and sees Freda and Edgar standing next to a police horse with Arch nearby. <laughs> All right, first I take a second to be shocked by the horse again. I say hi to Gwen, who's right in front of me. Uh, hi, Gwen. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for hanging out back here with me. And I'm going to That do... takes most of your turn. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, a, formal greeting, cast... a formal greeting takes a full action. Uh, All right. I'm going to cast Firebolt, a cantrip. That is a 22 to hit on Freda. All right. Uh, fire streaks across the cavern and hits the cultist in the chest for some amount of fire damage. All right. Assume, and that fire I damage assume. is one. All right. Literally uh, uh, one. <laughs> That's really frustrating. You don't get to add anything to that? No, nothing to it's add to that. Trip, also, man. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a D10. I rolled a D20 because I don't have a D10. I'm just cut in half, but that's yeah. one. So, <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, uh, Freda is like, has had like a hot drink splashed on her. I forget the gender of Freda, uh, but basically is slightly sunburned. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You, here's your turn. Not to say that. Okay. All set, Zonoth. Shoemate, you're next. All right. Getting that short bow and uh, aiming at Freyda. There is and... also Munder is right up next to you if you want to do a melee attack. Uh, No, because my short bow deals more situational. Um, um, do you... Hmm? Now I'm trying to remember. Do you incur disadvantage for taking a shot when there is someone right next to you? Yeah. Why would you do that? Oh, don't move. You do if it, it's at them. It only has to be at that someone else. Okay. okay. Couldn't remember. Anyway, that's a 19. That's going to hit. All right. And and this is, so I'm just trying to check because you fired a crossbow before. Now you're I, that, I, I meant to say short bow. It oh, okay. Not, I just thought you were just like always rotating a short through your weapon. <laughs> no, no, no. I only have a short bow, but uh, yeah. yeah I meant All right. That. Arrow sails across the cavern, catches Freda in the side for? Uh, six damage. Oh. Dan, what does that sound like? A lot. There was just a deep. There's a lot of yeah. layers. Yeah. Fred, Fred is not happy about this. Um, also, I have uh, Vex on that short bow. So oh. next time I get advantage on my attack roll. Okay. Freda is officially Vexed. All right. That was team good guys. Next up is team Cultus. Do we know Dan. really who's the good guys at this point? Well, team, we... you guys. That's you a pretty That's fine better. line. Yeah. Um, why don't, uh, Dan, why don't you uh, do okay. some cult stuff? So we've got some cultists. Uh, Egger is still uh, very displeased about this horse being in here. And uh, he's once again going to stab at Scuzz and say, seriously, get that horse out of here. 19 to hit. <gasps> yeah. 
Excuse me. You're excused. Was that Freda doing that? A creature within five feet of it me? It was not. It was Egger, who is not within five okay. feet of you. Carry on, then. I might have something to say later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's uh, a podcast. I hope you do. <laughs> that will be four uh, slashing damage on Scuzz. Horse Scuzz. All right. Uh, Hold on. F- Freda. Ooh. Is Freddy going to go for Arch or Scuzz? Tricky question. Uh, Freda also seems upset about uh, there being a Um, horse in here. So, uh, Arch, now is your chance. Then I will make a sentinel attack on Freda using my reaction to make a melee attack against the attacking creature. (gasps) Good news. Freda rolled a crit on Scuzz. Okay. Well, goodbye, horse. Well, I rolled a seven to attack uh, Freda. He clangs off Freda's armor. As Freda skewers the riding horse that was named Scuzz. Oh. Uh, R.I.P. Scuzz uh, for, horse. For probably, well, let's say eight damage. Eight damage? Eight okay. Damage. Five of that to horse, three of that to Scuzz, as Scuzz drops his wild shape ah, and takes the damage himself. Edgar and Freda both take a step like back, figuratively, not like actually moving out of range. Mm-hmm. You go like, whoa, that horse was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think our handbook covers this. This was not in the training, dude. Uh, Munder is meanwhile up in Shoemate's face uh, and is going to take a stab at Shoemate. I'd like to see you try. That is a crit fail. (laughs) Oh, no, Munder. They they stab, and this time, not only does Shoemate slip deftly out of the way, but that the scimitar plunges into the wall and does that thing where it's like, boing, (laughs) trying to pull it out of the wall. Uh, uh, we have two more cultists. There's two more cultists who rush in and attack. Dan, who would they like to attack? Uh, I think they'll go. One will go to the right and go after Shoemate, and one will go in between and go after Arch. Wow, there's a lot of cultists in here. It's, it's almost like you went to. Cultists. It's too like you went to cultists. where all they live and attack them. Uh, <sighs> these are Yenbelm and Edward. <laughs> Does Ed- Edward get mixed up with Edgar all the time? <laughs> no, one of them is just a normal name. One of them is a fantasy name. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> They're brothers, Edward and Edgar. Oh, that's... Mm. Ed, Ed, it's so Eddie. sweet that they're going to die in the same room together. <laughs> yeah, it's poetic. Seeing Yenbelm written out in Roll20 <laughs> is more confusing than hearing it. Honestly, out. the best part is, in my list of names, it started with an I. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, Ian Belm. Ian Belm. Um, Ian Belm? Yeah, anyways. Ian Belm will stab at Arch, uh, who uh, he is, seems as the biggest threat in here, clearly, now that the horse is gone. 20, uh, <gasps> unnatural 20 to hit. That will hit me. Four slashing damage to Arch. Oh, no. Edgar, whose name was technically Edward, but he rechristened himself Edgar when he joined the cult. Uh, oh, is, it's a cult name. <laughs> Naturally, uh, is going to attack. It's like a confirmation name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We well, take yeah. a new name and new identity. Eleven to hit shoemate. Mm, nope. Uh, well, okay. They, Munder gets in their way, trying to pull out the sword as oh, Edgar's trying. Munder. Edgar's trying to get around. Can and I roll to like opening. flick blood in his face? No, that's free. Like, action. Ah. Free action. Free action. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And the cultists uh, are besetting our heroes. Well, our adventurers have located the cult. They have determined it is a cult of Vecna. They have completed the first of their tasks. But vengeance, vengeance may be elusive for they are going to need to defeat some of these cultists, ask some questions and return to the surface alive, or at least one out of five of them. And right now they are overwhelmed by these strange, strange men in their gray robes and their tattooed hands with their weird eye iconography. Is this where it all comes apart? Is this where the militia is defeated by the cultists, or will they turn the tide of battle and be victorious? For answers to questions such as that, tune in next time to Total Party Kill Shocktober Edition.
the Incomparable Podcast Network. Become a member and support this show today. TheIncomparable.com slash members. <laughs>